Everyone loves pets. Would you ever wonder what your dog or cat or frog or octopus does when you're not around? What is up, my friends? Welcome to another Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com. And we got a deck for you today. Standard, standard, standard. A lot of complaining about standard lately. Emer reclamation this, to ferry that. But um, there's still room to brew in standard. Still room to brew. And we've got a brew for you here right now. Practically straight out of Ikoria draft. I've dubbed it the Secret Life of Pets. And we have a, an Azorius Mutate deck here. Uh, playing a lot of cards you don't normally see in standard. And a few you do see pretty often in standard. So we have a, this is a creature deck. Sort of a creature based value deck. Uh, based around the mutate mechanic. Um, and our, our linchpin here is Polywog Symbi Symbiote. One three frog. All of your mutate cards cost one less. And whenever you cast a creature spell with mutate, either cast it or mutate it, you get to draw a card, then discard a card. It's a very, very powerful enabler for our mutators. Let's take a look at those right now. We got C Dasher Octopus, one of the most hyped cards coming into Ikoria. And uh, not gonna lie, um, card has underperformed a little bit but partially just due to how the format lines up. But very powerful card, very good draw engine. Sea Dasher Octopus. Cub Warden, um, kind of a house, kind of a house here. Cub Warden is a huge lifelinker. It makes tokens, and of course, when you stack up on it and mutate multiple times, you get to make a ton of tokens. So very, very powerful effect. We have the simple Volcapeat, just a mutate effect that can give flying. Obviously good with Cub Warden and Sea Dasher Octopus. And then Pouncing Shore Shark, um, a card that was... A slam first pick in limited. Pretty good at constructed too, and having flash helps play into our kind of pseudo flash theme in the deck. Now, one of the problems of mutate, of course, is that you go really all in. You go really big on one creature, and if that creature gets killed, you kind of lose all your hard work. But we have protection for that. We have four copies of Selfless Savior, the best doggo, um, to protect our creatures, and a pinch can get mutated onto as well. Also have Fight as One to protect our creatures as well. And then we have our, our other big mutate target here in Stone Coil Serpent, a card that sees a lot of play in standard regardless, but uh, is the perfect vessel for, for mutations. So mutations mutate the printed properties of the card. So if I mutate a Sea Dasher Octopus onto a Stone Coil Serpent and choose to put it on top, any plus one, plus one counters that Stone Coil Serpent has accumulated will go on top of that. It'll cease to be a 0-0 zero, zero with two plus one plus one counters on it, and it'll become a 2-2 two, two with two plus one plus one counters on it, while maintaining reach, trample, and protection from multicolored. Now this is big because it means you can't bounce it with Teferi, one of the uh, you know the real real problems for our deck. So that's the mutate core. We're also playing four copies of Brazen Borrower as our piece of interaction that um, can also be mutated on two. And uh, a little more interaction here. It's very time raveler, obviously one of the best cards in the format. Um, one of the best cards possible against Team Reclamation, the best deck in the format, and just a good piece overall. It can bounce things and draw cards and so on. Two copies of Dovin's Veto. Again, a little extra ammo here against Team Reclamation. While also just being a fine card, um, we can counter Shadow of Sky and removal spells and Planeswalkers and things like that. A nice card to have access to. A bunch of blue-white lands. Two copies of Animal Sanctuary which can put a plus one plus one counter on target. Bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. And we have birds, cats, dogs, and snakes in our deck. So pretty powerful little value land here. Cyborg, a lot of the cards you'd expect and a few you wouldn't. Uh, Glass Casket, Aether Gust, Mystical Dispute, the Fourth Teferi. All pretty obvious. We have Giant Killer against uh, large green creature decks to kill things like Questing Beast. We have, we have Heliod's Intervention against uh, Racto Sacrifice, Witches Oven decks, things like that. And our coolest card in our cyborg. I can't even say it. Archipelagor, that might have been right. Not to toot my own horn or nothing. This card is an absolute house in any sort of ground creature matchup. Um, mono green aggro, mono white aggro, especially when your opponent doesn't have removal. Um, this card is unbelievable. I know it looks like a draft con uncommon, but this is a real card. So the secret life of pets. And uh, so far I am undefeated with this deck. I have played it in three matches on stream. And I uh, haven't lost yet, so we're going to try and keep that streak going here with a deck that's pretty powerful, but also really, really fun and kind of inventive in this somewhat stale standard format. Let's go. But first, 
Big word from our sponsors at CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com now has their own branded sleeves. These sleek, matte finished sleeves will keep all standard size cards safe and protected. Get yours today at CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, let's go. Round one, Secret Life of Pets. Lose of a die roll, no big deal. I mean, this is our the one two curve we want here. Uh, turn one stone coil into turn two three three C dasher is very very good. So we're gonna keep this hand a little awkward on the lands, but it looks like we might get our first team of reclamation opponent right away. Growth spiral all day. Hopefully no Bone Crusher Giants, because that would stink. Alright, so there's no chance we don't just let it ride here. These decks don't usually play removal in their main deck, but if they have it, they have it. Of course, if they kill it in response to the Octopus coming on, we'll still get an Octopus if they have Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, worst case would be Scorching Dragon Fire after Mutate resolves, but listen, you don't. we don't have the cards to not go for it, you know? So, Groot Spiral. Passage. Now, now we have a card draw engine in play, which is pretty big. So it's going to be uh, pretty important for us to draw some counter spells to fairies, things like that. But we're going to for that. This is probably our our best possible start. And uh, pretty sweet. Let's keep going here. Next turn, we have an interesting choice. We can play a Stone Coil for three. We can play Stone Coil for one, and then end step mutate. All right, they're going to Brazen Borrower and bounce my oct our Octopus Pile. So that card, of course, is very good against us, unfortunately. Um, I believe we're going to go for a Stone Coil on one and end step Sea Dasher. Because um, now our hand is flooded. we got to get some things out. We could also actually go Stone Coil for one, Stone Coil for two, and then double Octopus next turn. I don't hate that either. Um, I actually like that better. Definitely Brazen Bar, one of the better cards in the format against us. I guess, I guess an actual kill spell would have been worse, but typically the one, the, one of the advantages we have over Reclamation is they don't have many removal spells. I guess they do, though. I guess they're playing a ton. Uh, typically these decks don't play that many removal spells, but... Cub Warden. That's a pretty good one. Um, so we can Cub Warden now... We'll have a 4-6 lifelinker, make some tokens, and we can start octopying the turn after. Alright, we're going on top. It's a pretty big swing here. They haven't really executed their plan yet, because they've kind of been drawing. Okay. We are like in the last few hours of a ladder right now. People are like in a rush to try and get themselves up to top two, uh, top 1200. So, all right, so we get to bring in all of our, uh, all Haiti cards, uh, Teferi, Mystical Disputes, and uh, I believe we want all the Aether Gusts. We get to cut down on some of the QT stuff. So Fight as One's gone. Um, I'd say Brazen Bar is not particularly great against them. Um, I might just cut all of them actually, because Aether Gust is just a better removal spell or counter spells. Um, I suppose it makes this a little soft to a uh, Night Pack Ambusher. But still a Pouncing Short Shark. We'll shave a Volcapede, I think. It's probably one of the weaker cards in the deck. Post-board, I think we're in pretty good shape. I mean, four Teferi, five Counter Spells. Uh, Aether Gush should be pretty good, too. Pub Warden, too strong. Pretty hard to mulligan this hand. It's definitely awkward. We would not like to draw so many Stone Coil Serpents, but it has Teferi on three. It's got a big threat. Only two lands is a little tough. We're on the draw. You know, they mulligan a six. Um, we do want to try and guarantee Teferi on three. I think I'm going to play this Hapland first. I'd rather just play a 2-2 two -two into Teferi rather than play a 1-1. One -one, then maybe another 1-1 one -one and then Teferi. So, Volcapete. Volcapete's a clock. A Volcabeat on a Stone Coil Serpent is a pretty significant threat. Um, 
think we really want to draw one of our counter spells, though. I'm just going to ship it. I think we're pretty aggressively looking for uh, Mystical Dispute, Dovin's Veto, things like that. All right, no Road Spiral. Love to see it. Gonna play two one ones. I think playing the two two is probably better. Either way, we get Bone Crusher Gianted. So, Pulsing Shore Shark. All right. So, I don't think we're gonna play to Fairy here. I don't know. It's kind of tough. They probably won't have anything to do with their mana, honestly. Uh, if we don't play to Fairy, whereas if we play it, it probably gets gets countered. I guess we just ship it. We can come warden next turn. It's probably getting countered, but we're gonna soul seer the stone coil in response. That's pretty interesting. So, if they had any smaller kill spell, they probably would have cast it. So they probably don't have Scorching Dragonfire in hand. We could just minus here uh, in an attempt to try and guarantee value off of it in case they have another Soul Seer. Interesting. So obviously they need, need to get the Fairy off the board, and they could have used Soul Seer to get it, so they probably have another one. I'm going to minus. I, have a plan. I think guaranteeing value is pretty important. And... Uh, in the main phase, Night Pack Ambusher. Uh, which is pretty annoying, uh, unfortunately. This might be a bad idea. We uh we can shore shark it a little bit later, but not yet. Um we probably just play a 4-4 stone coil here and then block if they if they try to uh, attack our Teferi. We could just hard cast Cub Warden also. Um Honestly isn't the worst. Yeah, sure. Not exactly how we draw it up, but getting punished for uh, for minusing our Teferi there. If we had kept it, we could have just bounced the Nightback Ambusher, and things would have been really, really good for us. But another Nightback Ambusher. That's really bad. Um, I mean, we're not going to chump block, so all right. I guess they get Teferi. We do have pouncing short shark. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. That's pretty gross. I don't know if we can beat double knight back ambush or we can obviously bounce one and then force them to replay it. I guess that's what we're doing. We're just gonna play short shark and on the cub warden and just get in. It sucks our cub warden's never gonna get any bigger because we didn't get to put the serpent on it. But I think we have to do this now or we're just gonna fall way by way behind. So I could also just play a Stone Coil for one and put the put, put the Shore Shark on the Stone Coil, making it a 5-4 Trample, um, which can at least attack into Ambushers. We lose out we lose out on the uh, the Mutated for the Cub Warden, but the one ones probably don't matter that much. I actually like that better. Gonna need to draw a little more gas here. Um, definitely uh, gonna bring on our, our giant killers. They're gonna be super heavy on Nightback Ambusher. All right, so, uh, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't think we, we can actually win this game. I don't think we can beat two Nightback, nightback Ambushers. Um, if we attack with a Shore Shark, we're just trading for a 4-4 Wolf when they play the Nightback Ambusher, which is terrible. Uh, I think we're in big trouble. I'm just going to cast a huge Stone Coil Serpent. Game has not panned out well for us. Um, I think that the, the crux of this game was minusing a Teferi. Because they Soul Seared, I just was sure they had another, another, uh, another Soul Seer effect. Uh, but... I guess I just had multiple Nightback Ambushers, and they felt like they could just battle through with the Fairy, which has worked for them, so... I'm 
Need to draw some sort of spell here also. We are definitely pretty flooded. Only I drawn five actual spells this game. I'm going to Mystical Dispute, my huge thing, sure. Sure shot. Nah, that's bad. Right, let's send in the uh, the Shore Shark. They are at 11. Only one card in hand. They're going to trade. No? Not going to trade. Okay. I mean, they only have one card in hand. And it is a Nightback Ambusher. So, that was pretty good. Um, the Octopus can go on the Shore Shark and bounce something. Um, if I bounce an Ambusher, we can just recast it. But I can bounce a token. It's actually really, really good. Um, we're going to send our Shore Shark here. Alright, so we're going to mutate. We're still going to lose a shark, but we're going to be able to kill two wolves and draw a card. That's where we're going to go under. Bounce one of these. Could spike an Aether Gust too, right? I guess that would be off the combat damage draw, so. Kill that, and go to five, and draw. Gee, that's actually, as far as, you know, as far as, uh, you know, drawing a land goes, it couldn't, could be worse than that one, I suppose, so. But now we are at the mercy of double Nightback Ambusher. It's funny, we're hoping to draw a Volcapete, one of the cards he boarded out, because we just have a hundred million lands, so. Be a pretty bold attack. All right, I mean, oh my god, this is unreal. All right, um, just gonna do this now. We attack. They did. We just trade with two uh, two wolves. Which is pretty bad. So, I say go. Not in a great spot here. Uh, our 10 lands not doing us any favors. Right on time, Mystical Dispute. Right on time. That's bad. They topped a card. So yeah, I think we screwed this game up. I think if we had just uh, just plus the Teferi, we were able to bounce the Ambusher and have enough tempo to run, run away with the game, but instead we uh, we allowed ourselves to get double Nightback Ambushered. Um, again, based on the information that we had, um, it really felt like they had a second Soul Seer or some sort of effect like that, but... That is a large Stone Quail Serpent. Um, do we play around a Mystical Dispute? I feel like no. Maybe. I guess playing around Mystical Dispute leaves open our own Mystical Dispute. I guess we do. It's not like making it a 6-6 or an 8-8 really matters because they just have 44 fours. I think we're going to need to draw a Volcapete to win this game. All right. 7-7 seven, seven, Stone Coil Serpent. Mana up for to pay for a dispute, to play our own dispute, or to Animal Sanctuary. Nightback Ambusher is a ridiculously, stupidly powerful magic card. Um, it's the kind of card that just wins the game completely by itself. Oh, great, another one. Well, that was a, definitely a poor play on their part. So, if they had done that in reverse order, they would have had a third Nightback Ambusher, but they did not. So, good for us. It looked like we were just living in Animal Sanctuary, but the reality was we had the Dispute, which is nice.
Oh my god. Are we just dead? We do have lifelink, right? Number five. Uh, we are dead to expansion explosion. Exactly. Hopefully they just forgot the lifelink and don't have expansion. Wow. Didn't read Cub Warden. That's a little bit of the extra value you get from playing weird cards you constructed. Uh, your opponents don't always read them or know what they do instinctively. You know, opponents played around Euro a thousand times, but Cub Warden? Maybe not so much. Maybe not so much. 1-0. Secret Life of Pets. Love it. Take that, Ema Reclamation. Okay. That's yeah, pretty good. We have one drop into, uh, into Octopus. It's not the best possible one drop, but... Swamp Gutter Ball. Oh, that's the better one. I should have played the island probably, but... I just already clicked the other land. Alright, we have our turn to uh, Octopus. Are we going to go for it? I'm not sure yet. Another gutter bones. Alright, we got the one lander. We're going for it. We're going for it. Um, if we were to wait, it would throw us off curve horribly. So, Cub Warden, too. Alright. If they don't kill the octopus, I'm feeling real good here. They did not kill the octopus. They didn't play a land. Jeez. Alright, so we're getting in. Draw another card. Another Stone Quill Serpent. I ain't got a. I think I want to play with Temple because I want to be able to Cub Warden next turn. Um, so we can just like play Temple and say go with Borrower up. Uh, play a 2 2 Serpent. We can also go Serpent and Savior and just block one of these Gutter Bones. Kind of like that, actually. Let's look at our top card. Another Octopus. I don't think I want that, actually. Um, I don't know what we would put it on. We're kind of like going tall on one creature now. I guess it's good, like post cub warden yeah, i guess it is good just makes two one ones also we'll keep that all right then we'll play a savior and a stone coil for one stone coil for one's intent is to get in front of all these gutter bones make sure we don't die and then next turn we have cub warden on octopus with savior back up punks to keep a one lander life's to be pretty easy so we're gonna want our glass caskets for sure and our giant killers and our teferis i think teferi maybe not teferi actually uh, Teferi is good against their bigger threats, but we already have Casket and Giant Killer for that, so maybe on the draw we just don't want Teferi at all. Um, and these Vetoes are pretty bad. And then I don't know if we want Archipelagor against them because it is they have a lot of kill spells. It's better against uh, like Mono Green, Mono White, things like that. Fight is one Giant Killer. I think I'm happy with this. Um, it's possible that Archipelago is just better than Volcapete. Maybe. Also, I'm not sure about Teferi. I think Teferi is like very good against Rotting Registor and there are some of their bigger threats. But it's obviously you know bad if we're behind. Um, I'm going to board them out of a draw. I might want them on the play. Also, not totally sure about Fight as one. I think Volcapete's also a card that's not super necessary. Let's bring in one Archipelagor. Definitely don't want to draw two, but I think that one could definitely be quite good. We're leaning pretty hard on Cub Warden here. Uh, Cub Warden's definitely our, our best card by a lot. Alright, I mean, we have the, the Stone Coil Octopus Nuts here again with a Casket thrown in for good measure. So, pretty good hand. Height Sail Freebooter. So, good news, bad news. They get our casket. We get a free hit with the octopus, which is nice. We're also teeing up on Cub Warden. Now, if they have a way to kill this, obviously it stinks a bit, but we at least got our card back, so. Also, we'll waste their turn. They spend turn three 
playing Eliminate and not hiding Rotting Registrar. Oh, they're going to play Hunted Nightmare and give my Octopus Death Touch. Now it has Death Touch and Trample, which is pretty good. And we draw a Selfless Savior, also pretty good. Um, we're setting up for Cub Warden for sure. Let's play our Savior first. Back and draw. And no Temple. Right. Well, we're holding on for life for next turn. Um, Brazen Borrower. I think we can keep Brazen Borrower. I think I like that. So, goal is going to be firing up Cup Warden on this Octopus next turn and getting in, making blockers, and doing the doing the world here. So, let's see what the follow up is. Well, I Mayhem's good, but I mean, giving my Octopus uh, Death Touch is pretty sweet for us. We do have a shock, unfortunately, but we're getting we're getting less life back. So, so hop it on. On the top, we're gonna have a 4-6 lifelinker, make two tokens. It's got death touch, lifelink, reach, trample, and flash, very important, of course. And then uh, when it hits, we're gonna draw a card, we're gonna gain life. We're building up to this archipelagor. And a polywog. I haven't cast a polywog yet. It's like the best card in our deck. Spawn a mayhem, take some damage. It does get bigger because they're there at nine now, but we have brazen borrower to bounce stuff too. This is a, a bad Mamma Jamma. And uh, don't think they have a way to kill it that would get around Selfless Savior. Uh, Grasp of Darkness would be the only way to kill around Indestructibility, and we're a little bigger than that. Rankle. Okay, here comes Rankle. And they're getting in with all of the flyers for, oh, they're getting in with everything. Now, if I want to block the Hunted Nightmare, um, I have to block it with two things, but I'm Pretty sure I do here. This is 5, 10, 13, yeah. So we'll block the Haunted Nightmare. That's a hit, you know. Now they can Rankle Sack if they want to, but all of their creatures are pretty good. Let me untap. We have Polywog, Brazen Borrower, Archipelagor lined up, uh, Cub Warden gaining life. Would love if we had a, a card to mutate this turn, honestly, and trigger this uh, Cub Warden a little more, but... Tough Rankle here, because they, if they give us back the Casket, it's obviously a pretty big swing. We can Casket one of their... Casket their Hunted Nightmare. It's a pretty big uh, Boomer. Each player loses one and draws a card, sure. Uh, that's a Mutator, and that's a pretty good one. So, we can actually... Let's see here. Oh, that's also a good one. Oh, boy, everything's coming to Millhouse here. Okay, um, so hmm. bouncing spawn of mayhem seems ideal because our, our creatures can block the hunted nightmare anyway. Shore shark is a four three, not, not a so we would deal we would deal uh <laughs> we would deal uh one more point of of uh of damage. I did like the idea of having Brazen Bar up, but playing Shore Shark's pretty good too. Let me just Shore Shark, bounce Spawn of Mayhem on Cub Warden, deal the extra point, get two blockers, gain five life, and I think we're in good shape for next turn. Yeah, we could play Polywog if we shock, but we're not going to do that. So, on untap land, I think I should like that. I think we're gonna do this now. We have the extra life point lifelink. So, oh, I guess now we made a mistake because now it would die to grasp of darkness. That would be really awkward if they had grasp of darkness. Oh, well, apparently they don't. So, cool. Two and zero for the secret life of pets. Rolling right along here, and uh, this deck is super sweet. Just a really fun but awesome deck. Loving it. Secret life of pets. Remember, folks, there is a companion article to this video, as there always is on my Monday video on CoolStuffInc.com. 
Point your browser to coolstuffinc.com, hop on over, read the article as well. I do a video article every Monday, a written article every Friday, and of course, there's always free content every weekday on coolstuffinc.com. No paywall. No paywall on coolstuffinc.com. Kind of a loose one. This is one of those Scryland loose keeps. Um, I think we're going to keep any creature that costs one or two makes his hand awesome. Opponents also mulligan too. We're, we're going to keep the loose one here. It's a little, it's a little loose, but we're going to keep. Um, we have, like, what? We have four stone coil, four polywog. There you go. See, look at that. Just, just the nuts every time. And uh, possibly another reclamation deck here. All right. And light her up. Don't shock me. Ooh, Mystical Dispute. That's gross. Mystical Dispute should not be allowed to counter fun cards. You know? Only should be allowed to counter, like, Teferi and Expansion Explosion and things. Alright, I guess we're going to Sanctuary. I mean, we, don't have a, we could play a tap land, but we're going to Cupboard next turn, so... Don't, uh, don't stomp me. Alright, thank you. Trip to Triome. Trips in the Triomes and a Blast Zone. Okay, I can't Blast Zone my Stone Cold Serpent. They still have four cards left. I mean, we're just going for it here, so if they got a, a, a little Mystical Dispute, they can, they can go for that if they'd like to. That's a big boom boom. Large Kitty Cat, 5-7, Super Bane Slayer Angel. Coming to town. Oh, we love to see it. Love to see it. Next turn, we can Cub Warden onto the Cub Warden itself and make four tokens. Although we would not get any additional power or toughness, or just put it on the cat. Probably put it on the cat. Uh, Brazen Barb. Well, now they can, they can Blast Zone up to four and then pop it next turn. Um, so I almost think we should just like not even bother cub wardening we can just get in leave up brazen borrower and animal sanctuary yeah i'm not really in a rush to to get blown out by blast zone so definitely some value in like making a bunch of tokens i guess if we just cub warden onto the cub warden i guess they're actually at three um they can't have Storm's Wrath. Actually, yeah, I think we're just going to play Cub Warden on Cub Warden and make four tokens. Um, making four tokens ensures a kill because they would need to be able to Storm's Wrath and kill the 5-7. So even though this is like a little weird, I think this is just fine. Throwing cats at him. Sure. You're up. Uh, and now any cat is lethal at instant speed. We'll take that. Obviously a pretty bad draw on their part, but we'll take it. We'll take it. Hopefully their hand was Aether Gust, Aether Gust, Aether Gust, Aether Gust. Hopefully. So dispute, dispute, dispute. It's fairy. Uh, gust, Gust, Gust. Don't think you want Giant Killer in the dark. Uh, cut Volcapete. Uh, oops. The Brazen Borrowers. The fight is ones. I think this is good. I mean, Borrower's not bad. Borrower certainly makes life safer. If they have... It's just like safer against cards they could have we're not ready for, like uh, Nightpack Ambusher. We do have like Gusts, but maybe we want like two Borrowers. Maybe cut the Volga Beats. Honestly, Selfish Savior's not great against them. They don't have a ton of removal. Let's shave a savior and let's go to one shore shark also it's really bad against mystical dispute and now we have borrower and gust just for removal so the target is like you're never sure exactly which cards are going to have post board there's definitely a decent amount of variation in their deck could have Four Nightpack Ambushers could have zero, and so on and so forth. Mulligan again, sure. I mean, that's the nuts again, so we're going to keep this. 
Um, I think we want to keep the animal sanctuary. Well, I guess that once the once the octopus is on the serpent, it's no longer a snake. Let's keep it though. Let's keep it. Things go wrong. Like they may dispute this, we can make our serpent a threat. We keep pumping an end step or something like that. They're on five, we're on six, so. Again, I feel no remorse when the team reclamation player mulligans to five. Not a single tiny ounce of regret. Or not regret, remorse. How did you feel being denied those hungry, hungry hippos? Regret. All right, so we're gonna attack. They could have a, a stomp or a, if they have dragon fire, it's the absolute worst. I kinda wanna just let this through. Probably have Brute Spiral, but yeah. We can always end step the octopus. See what they do. Also counter a reclamation if they have it. So getting a mountain is interesting. And a blast zone, sure. All right, I mean, I think I have like a dispute or something, we're trying to go for this. All right, so they're gonna stomp, which is actually pretty good for us. We still get, we still get the octopus, which is really good. Um, and now we've accomplished basically the same thing. Nope, they have no bone pressure. All right, we're gonna beat this. This also removes their bone pressure giant from the equation. That was pretty good. Double enlightenment. So they just cast. They have a lot of the spells. Okay, that's fine. No land to cast Bone Crusher, so we're gonna play to Fairy. Road Spire. All right. Thankfully, that wasn't dispute because we have all lands on hand again. So. Don't worry, plus, so I got go. this. God draw a spell. Now, if we bounce the Bone Crusher, they can just stomp the Teferi. But realistically, if we don't bounce it, then it'll just get attacked. It'll get attacked anyway. We're not going to chump block to defend it, so... They can have his Teferi, I think. They don't have any cards in hand, so just uh, bounce this, buy some time. Try to find a nice threat here. Hello? Opponent? I'll protect you. Man, we are uh, drawing a lot of lands here, let me tell you. Thankfully, we have Animal Sanctuary, so we can pump ourselves a savior up. All right, so they can shoot the Teferi and pump it, which is not great. You just let me know if you're up for round two. Good doggy. Another good doggy. Attack. I think we're definitely the beat down duck here. Animal Sanctuary helping us out here on the old flood skis. I mean, they pop off on Blast Zone. We can obviously use one dog to save the other, so all, all good dogs don't go to heaven. <laughs> this is unreal. Uh, all right. I suppose we're a little scared of Nightpack Ambusher, but I'm gonna leave his savior back actually. Nightpack Ambusher, um, uh, Shark Typhoon, like, it just doesn't seem worth the attack.
All right, so this is fine. I mean, this just like turns our our one one selfless savior into a stone rain. I love me, I love me a good stone rain. So, so we do have um, we do have t uh, nine lands, but oh my god! All right, they have Elder Gargoth, um, which is bad for us. Now we can make this into a five five, and then Octopus would make it a six six, but that's not good enough. Yeah, uh, we're gonna need to bring in those. Uh, need to bring in those giant killers. It's unfortunate because like we do have four to ferry, three aether gusts, two brazen bar, we're and a pouncing. Tree. We have ten cards that would bounce, that would deal with this card, but we just have all lands, um, which is very unfortunate. Um, because we're probably gonna lose to this card. having so many ways to deal with it. Cub Warden is pretty good. Um, so Cub Warden would be a 8, 10. It's pretty good. All right, let's, uh, let's ship off here. And it's also a cat, so you can, uh, we can uh, pump it with Animal Sanctuary. I don't like that they have uh, three spells in their hand, but... I think trading with Gargoth here is probably okay. I mean, it, it's pretty bad in the sense that, like, they're going to have a bunch of stuff and we're not, but we can pump these cats a little bit and just try and get going on that, I guess. We would trade with Gargoth, and that's it. We just say go here. Maybe we do. They would block with the Gargoth and like the Bone Crusher, and we can only kill one of them. I think we just say go here. We're also pumping it every turn too, so. Bone Crusher Giant onto a We could pump the cat and then put the octopus on it, which would let it live. It would not fizzle the bone crusher though. Um, and it would leave us with a three-three octopus lifelink. Which honestly is pretty good on this board. Is that better than putting it on the cupboard and making two one ones? This does not have trample because it's a selfless savior. <sighs> Yeah, I think that's better than having two more tokens. Or they have one 3-3, three, three, then two 1-1s, one, basically. Also, if we draw a way to deal with this or bounce it, we get to just smush, which is pretty great, too. Another C dash or octopus. Um, I think we're just saying go. They didn't play Bone Crusher, which is kind of interesting. And we're just hanging out, pumping up our Cub Warden, so it would really stink if they had a bounce effect, but they're going to explosion the cat for two. So, kind of funny, same issue. Do I want to have a 3-3 a three, three lifelinking cat? Or do I want to just let this die? I guess it's the same thing, right? We're not growing our... We're not growing our... Cub Warden, but... It's big enough.
And now if we can just draw a way to get this off the board, we have great attacks too. I think pouncing short shock would be the best case scenario. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is going to go on the Cub Warden. We should probably actually pump it first. Unless it's this beast too, it is not. The problem is if we pump it first, they can Mystical Dispute. Because um, if, I, if I... I guess if I... If they triple block the Cub Warden... That doesn't, doesn't matter, actually. If you should block the Cub Warden, then both these get through. This is actually pretty great. So we're just going to put it on the on the Cub Warden. If I tap my lands beforehand, it, it opens up Mystical Dispute, too. So Don't have Double Dispute, please. That would suck. Oh, they have Double Dispute. It's so sick. All right. Pretty annoying. I don't think we could have played around that, obviously. Alright, that's just as good, so. In some ways, maybe better. Bounce Gargoth. And send the squad. Everything's got lifelink. Everything draws cards. You can pump the Cub Warden. Typhoon for five. That is good. Uh, but... I think it does not have Trample, though. I keep thinking it's a... It's a... A Stone Coil Serpent. Because that's usually what you mutate onto. But it just, it's actually a... A Selfless Savior with four counters on it. Which is a little unusual, but... Alright, so they're going to get my Octopi here. Um... We get to deal some damage, gain a bunch of life. Unfortunately, they get to recast Elder Gargoth, which is really annoying, but now our Cub Warden is so big that we might be able to push through anyway. Look for another spell here. It's Fairy, Brazen Borrower, Aether Gust. That's a bold attack. They must have a second Shark Typhoon. They only burn it for one, though, so... Man, we are... I guess when you draw all lands in the early game, you gotta draw some good spells later on, right? There aren't any lands left to draw, you know? Dragonfire the Flyer, you got it. I think this game is, uh, is pretty over here. So we could bounce the Bone Crusher and force him to block with the Argoth, but I think we just want to bounce the Argoth. I've got it. <laughs> uh, Alright, we'll take that. Draw all lands in the early game, you know? You get paid off later. It's just the, uh, you're backlogging the good luck for later by drawing all lands in the beginning. 3 0, oh, the secret life of pets. Let's keep going here. Secret life of pets. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. And the, the amazing part is we actually haven't cast Polywog Symbiote yet. And Polywog Symbiote's like probably the best card in the deck. Uh, that's a card that really enables us. We have drawn a lot of uh, turn one or turn two Octo Octopies, but it's fine. Pwn's playing Gigantha. The Rakdos Sacrifice matchup's probably kind of tough, but I guess Cub Warden's really good, right? Because they can't... Anything that costs more than three that they can't claim the firstborn is pretty good against them, so... Those sacrifice is tough. We have a lot of bounce, I suppose. Buy some time. They have a uh, Priest of Forgotten Gods. We can send that thing packing a few times. I guess we wait until they... Play. I guess I'd be able to attack for one if I just bounce it now. And I'm almost certainly bouncing it anyway, so we'll just do it. We could wait till they play another creature and try and get them so they don't know what we're doing, you know, but I think we're getting in for a point is just probably better. 
And we almost want them to recast it so we can bounce it again with Teferi. Corpse, sure. There's our polywog. I mean, polywog's really good. We gotta, we gotta keep dealing with the uh, the priest, unfortunately. So, ideally, we'll draw the land here. I think. That's kind of what we're, uh, I know. My what we're up to. Polywog. That's pretty awkward. We found our polywogs, but we need lands. And priest of forgotten gods is really good against us. Oh, so man. Oh my god. These, these Rakdos Sacrifice decks are just so good against creature decks. It's just unbelievable. These decks would be very oppressive in the format if the best decks weren't all non-creature based. You know, these decks, decks aren't as good against Reclamation and things like this that. Is hardly my worst defeat. Uh, we're in trouble. I oh, drew a land. Um, we could like double Polywog here and try and set up for a big turn next turn. I don't hate that. And we could actually play Teferi and Cub Warden if we draw land. Um, I kind of like that. We could also possibly go Volk Pete and Cub Warden in the same turn. Um, they don't have a stack outlet currently, so they can't blow us out with Claim the Firstborn, hopefully. They're descending. Um, they play a land that's not a Fable Passage. We don't. We want our Polywogs to live, obviously. So, like, we could just block the Scorpions. They would deal two extra damage to each Polywog to kill them. Seems tough, but if they have like a, a Woe Strider or something, that complicates things. Um, this mutates for one. This mutates for two. Be three and two. We need both Polywogs in play to go for our big Cub Warden play, I think. Um, we're going to gain a lot of life next turn, too. This is a weird spot. Like, it's only two points of damage, but... I'm not going to block. I mean, I mean, I'm being a coward here, but they have a Woe Strider. They can uh, make a really clean house. Priest of Forgotten Gods, sure. Ugh. So they're gonna claim the firstborn their own priest to give it haste. And we're gonna lose everything. Yeah, I mean these these matches are so hard. It's so frustrating because like it's funny how oppressive these these Rakdos decks are to creature decks. Um and, again, it just doesn't matter because the best decks in the format aren't creature decks. But if they were, this deck would be so good. All right, so we bring in our Caskets and our Heliod's Intervention, I guess. All they really have is Oven. Um, and then, I mean, Archipelago, I probably can't kill this card super effectively. I only have three caskets. This is tough. The fairy's pretty bad. Borrowers. It's also because like the, the priest is just so good against us too. I mean Teferi's good against priest. Teferi's gonna play too, I guess. I honestly think we should probably chill on I mean, Brazen Borrower's not super great. Just a bad bounce spell. Bring in a Teferi. Um Fight as one does nothing against the pings from Devil or Claim the Firstborn, so that can go, I think. Um, I guess the vetoes are bad. So even though countering a, a Claim the Firstborn is, like, pretty good, it's just so hard to counter the one mana spell. I kind of want the Archipelagors.
Not sure. Tough matchup for sure. It's a good, uh, I mean, the good news is if we can get a Stone Coil Serpent with a four cost mutator on it, they probably can't kill it. Uh, all right, this hand's pretty good. It's very is good against them it can, because it can bounce the, uh, the priest over and over again, but claim the firstborn's too good. I feel like I've played a lot of creature decks lately, and my record against this Rakdos Sacrifice deck is like so bad because they're just so good against creature decks. Oh, there's your oven. Alright, so. I mean, we're off to the races here. I'm pretty, pretty reasonable. We have no, no mutators yet, but. Um, you know, it's fairy's pretty good. We get Borrower. We can bounce some things. Shocking for Dreadhord Butcher. Saying go. We draw a Stone Quill. Stone Quill is pretty good. Um, bouncing Dreadhorde Butcher is, I want to say irrelevant, but not a card that needs to be bounced. I don't think we're going to play Stone Quill for three here. And uh, I guess the Polywog can serve. Oh, whatever, I misclicked. Whatever. Now if they play a devil, we get to bounce it. Judith the Scourge Diva. Alrighty. Sacrifice this to deal two to something, and then deal one so they can kill my Polywog. But I can just save it. So right now, both these target Polywog. Yeah, all right, save it, right? Seems like a fine exchange for us. Glass Casket. I think I'd rather just bounce the Jude. I think it's a fairy in play. Um, then use a Casket. Yeah, it's also more mana efficient. We can double spell next turn. Bounce Judith, draw a Mutator, no. Could leave back a Polywog so I can't haste kill the Teferi, but I think it's good anyway. I think I just want to kill them. Judith again, and Serrated Scorpion. Sure. Another Stone Coil Serpent. Um, I mean, now we kind of want to get rid of this Judith, I guess. No, I am not making this up as um, I go. We can like attack, and if they try and block the Scorpion on the Stone Coil, I guess like this thing, uh, they can't kill the Stone Coil anyway because the Judith deals the damage. Playing a five-five Stone Coil is kind of is somewhat appealing. The problem is Clan the Firstborn is just so good, you know. Um, I think I'm fine casting Casket here, just taking out Judith and attacking. Probably playing another 3 3 Stone Quail Serpent. They're gonna poke to fairy. Want me to phase you get out some of time? Food. Um we get to just mush and play another Stone Quail. Cool. Stone Coil is good against them. You know, their main recourse is Claim the Firstborn. Basically, just like, if they draw, you know, 1.5 Claim the Firstborns, you usually can't win. You know, one's usually a lot, two is usually unbeatable. If they don't draw them, then we're in good shape. But Claim the Firstborn is just so unbelievably good. Um, now we're on the draw. I think Teferi is a little worse than the draw, as is Brazen Borrower. Um, but I think this is fine. We could bring in like some Aether Gusts because their best cards are red. They do have Judith and the the two drop and Scourge Devil and claim the firstborn. 
Um, so maybe we wouldn't want the Archipelagors in the draw. Um, but is Gust better than Borrower? I don't think so. I'm going to take out one of these for a Borrower, another one to draw. All right, just don't draw a claim the first points, please. That's a hand. Uh, okay. Oh boy, that's bad. All right, I mean, we're keeping. We do have, uh, I mean, Volcapete on, on Stone Coil is actually a pretty significant threat. Um, so I, it, that's that's really good too, actually. We have a I, we have a pretty good chance here. On this curve is uh, actually quite good. Uh, I guess we have this Castle Ardenvale though. It's kind of mucking things up. So we can't. So if I can go Stone Coil on two, Volcapete on three, Cub Warden on four, that's pretty awesome. But they have Priest of Forgotten God, so we probably just can't ever win. So, all right. So many cards good against creatures, just unreal. Probably want like a fourth glass casket in the board at least. Probably want like two devout decrees, honestly, to have a chance in this matchup. Yeah, like we, I mean, being an active priest is pretty gross. All right, let's just bounce the priest and uh, buy some time. The problem is we have always, now we have always mutators. Where's our polywog this game? You know. Now they recast the priest, and we still are in the spot where we just like can't play anything. We could just you know mutate the cub and make some tokens to be in good shape, but. Defeat. Oh my god. Uh, that's not a, not a glass casket. Um, I guess we could like... Ugh, gross. We could play a stone coil on one, and then if they activate priest, put in the octopus, and then mutate the cub warden onto it, and just hope they have nothing. Because they have actual anything which dead, obviously. Um... It's a polarizing card. So un unbelievably good sometimes, and so mopey other times. They're flooding a bit. It's always that, I guess. We could flash in the octopus and block. Um, I don't think we can, re 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 we can like realistically beat anything. So maybe we just try and uh, try and minimize damage here. Like if they have a kill spell or of any kind or whatever, we really can't beat it. So I guess post combat claim the firstborn would ruin our life. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, we're gonna let this pass. I think. So you're telling me there's a chance to put the Cub Warden on the Stone Coil, too? It's pretty good. All right. I mean, hold on to your butts.
If you're gonna priest, they gotta do it now, right? Because otherwise, I'll sacrifice a uh, one-one life linker. If they don't have anything here, I think we have a chance to win this game, which is pretty, which is pretty insane. All right, uh, we'll sacrifice octopus, obviously, and don't draw heartless sack or something like that. I guess like that would still work. All right, I mean, we go to eight on the attack. And basically, if we can, if we can safely untap, um, we're probably in good shape. The problem is that they have a clean the firstborn. Obviously, they can just steal a cat. We can't really block, and they just kill us. Oh my god, no! All right, we're back to being dead. I thought we stole one here. Oh my god, they said everything. I thought we stole one here, but I guess we didn't. Oh my god. Okay, sure, whatever. All right, you win. All right, so, yeah, I mean, definitely a pretty bad matchup. Um, I mean, we definitely have the tools in the sense that, like, if we can just get a five mana or four mana cost thing into play, uh, I think if you want to beat that matchup, you probably need to uh, you probably need to have more glass casting than about decrease. I hate that deck. I really do hate that deck. Which is very impressive against creature decks. 3-1, though. 3-1 here for the Secret Life Pets. No more claim the firstborns, please. That card stays, dude. That card doesn't rotate. Claim the firstborn and witch's oven and cat will still be legal. I guess mayhem devil rotates. That's pretty good. All right. Ugh, boy, that hand's pretty bad. We're on the draw. I mean, we draw any one drop or a land. This hand's pretty good. I'm gonna keep it. I'm risky. Oh no. Oh, duress? Uh, sure. I guess. Up oh, the nuts. Haven't drawn Polywog very much. We have had turn one Stone Coil, turn two Sea Dash or Octopus a lot, so can't complain too much. Turn one Duress. Where's Mono Black Aggro? The boot. No, uh,. No targets here, my friend. Um, okay, I guess. That's a pretty strange block, but sure. Maybe they did forgot about it being a 3-3 three, three and not a 2-2. Two, two. Paragon. I mean, I guess we just bounce this, right? I mean, it would still we would still draw a card off of it, but we'll just bounce it. We're gonna land. We're gonna play Stone Quill for one. Give us more options next turn. We can see Dasher or Cub Warden, and so on and so forth. Castle, sure. The boot again. It's a lot of duresses, but there are many creatures in our deck. Many, many creatures. All right, um, we could cub warden here, but I think I'd rather just octopus because the cub warden would get eaten by the black lands. So uh, um, yeah. All right, the ship. Yep. Yep. So we're gonna lose a, a creature here, but we'll also just draw a card too, so. Draw two cards. Keep it flowing here. And all right, I mean a little chonked up, but rankle. That's pretty good, they can rankle it. With the octopus. It's not too shabby. We would like to uh, cub warden. Each player discards. Each player sacrifices a creature. Mm -hmm. Fine, I guess. Discarded a duress. Sure. A lot of duress is They're really real. A real anti reclamation deck here. Um, this is actually really. Then yeah, it's really good. So we can go. The fairy bounce, then brazen bar when they recast it. 
Unfortunately, we don't have any, any vessels for mutating. Um, which is a little awkward, but... Let's slow this down. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Hunted Nightmare. It's pretty interesting they would choose to play that over Rankle, but sure. What about that? And a Poliwog. That was a, a good draw. A good draw indeed. Let's try this. So now he can Poliwog. He finally got to get to Poliwog here in our fifth match. And fire off the Cub Warden. Get a loot going. And a game. A game. Nice duresses opponent. Nice duresses. So, mono black aggro of some kind. Giant killer. Glass caskets are going to be great. Um, I would say Dovin's Veto's got to go. Fight is one. It's like fine. But they could have Grasp of Darkness. Uh, I think I'm kind of not interested in it. Um, I don't know. I don't mind shaving it to Fairy also. Shave like a Volcapete. I don't think you want Archipelagor. No, I don't think so. Let's shave one fight as one. Just leave him sub one of those. Um, definitely want the caskets and the giant killers. Creatures. This seems fine. On the draw. On the play, we'd want probably all four Teferi, but on the draw, I think two is fine. It's a pretty solid hand. It's not great, but it's fine. I think there's some uh, in interesting questions here about our tap land, when, that, when that's going to come into effect. Um... We can just like tap land on one here. Okay, yeah, like like that. I don't playing the self saver. We're not gonna block a bit, so that's pretty good. The district. The district crowd goes wild. Meta Evan Legion. Um, it's awkward because the casket can't hit Spawn of Mayhem. It can't hit Rotting Register. We do have a Brazen Bar or two though. I kind of think we just casket here. Then you can play Selfless Savior, bounce something, and then untapping Cub Warden. Cub Warden's a pretty big game, for sure. I would like to have Fight as one up. We don't really have a good vessel for Cub Warden yet. I guess Brazen Borrower could be that vessel. Nothing? Wow. Alright, so. We're gonna just play the old Selfless Savior and say go, I guess. I mean, they might end up dueling it or something like that, but it's fine. We're not going to protect it, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Not really in a rush. I'm protect this one now. Let's pull this, we'll just bounce this gutter bones. Sanctuary, okay. So yeah, now you just get to like, I guess we're short on white mana, but we'll figure it out as it comes. Let's play this and say go. And then we're gonna end step borrower with Fred, and then we'll untap Cub Warden. We still have, we have our protection spell up too, so. So, sucks to have the shock here, but whatever. Big mutate. Right, so, we do that. We do this. For the blowout. You can get the pump on it, too. So, now we get a 4 6 attack, lifelink. And uh, we are a little low, but we also have Sanctuary and a couple 1-1s, one -one, so like, if the game slows to a crawl, we can keep pumping these up. Sure, so they have a very, very removal heavy hand, but could be worse. We've been flooding a little bit in these games. Oh my god. Alright, so... 
Can attack with both. Pump the unblock one. Thing is that they have a block and then a kill spell, and we have nothing left. So I'm just gonna say go here. Well, it makes sense their hand is all kill spells because they haven't played any threats, obviously. So Rankle's not bad. Oh my god, they didn't attack. I I just they didn't attack and the turns ended, so I misclicked and didn't activate my sanctuary, which is terrible. But all right, sure. This is frustrating. I just was sure they was attacking. It's such a strange place to not attack. Alright. Please let me draw a card. Yeah, alright, sweet. We do have Rankle Gutter Bones going here, which is kind of bad for us, but we also have Castle Lock Vein and District. So we are, you know, obviously we're flooding, they're not, and they have Triple Castle and a District and, and a Threat in play. So not a, not a great spot for us. Oh my god. Alright, so they have, they got everything here. Uh, Ten lands, probably too many lands for us to draw. Nine lands, whatever it is. Casket cannot take out Rankle. Um, we are probably dead here. We'll keep playing, but... I'm just going to play Savior to block the gutter bones. They just get it back anyway, though. I think we're just dead anyway. I don't think it matters. Kind of a sneaky game. Obviously, just draw lands, basically. I think given the amount of removal they have in their deck, uh, we're going to want that second fight as one for sure. Probably interested in Teferi too, honestly. I mean, if they're going to like be trying to bring in a million kill spells, we can just you know, have Teferi and play a little slower game. Um, so I would say we are less interested in... It sucks as like Rankle is actually kind of hard for us to interact with. I guess Barwork and Block it, which is really good. Um, I would say Volcapede is gone. It's bad against removal. Shore Shark is fine. Um, I kind of kind of land actually, because we're so it's going to be a slower grindier game. Um, yeah, I like this configuration. Whoa, doggy. I think this is fine. I mean, the saviors do line up well against removal, obviously, and borrowers pretty fine too. So that's pretty good. Sure, we can also trade the first savior for a better bonus. I think it's pretty cool too. So bark, bark. I mean. Right, I guess. There's so few spells in our deck, but I guess that's what you want to do. That's really annoying. So maximum punish for blocking there, unfortunately. Which really sucks. Um, Alright, let's just go here. We can bounce the Freebooter, uh, get our Teferi back, and then obviously um, we don't have any spells in our hand when they recast it. Back gutter bones and cast it. Alright, so well now we get to get a free octopus hit in and then play savior too. Seems like a worthless borrower. It's not gonna we're actually we'll just do this. Yes, yeah, see this is great. Put this here. And tap another borrower and a savior. Let's attack. Draw. Play Savior and have Borrower up. Let's take it. So now we have a Protected Octopus, which is great. Because this is all about drawing cards. They're going to try and one for one us to death. Agonizing Remorse? That's fine. We're not bouncing any response to that, so. Sure.
Setting in the boot, not a problem. Like a Knight of Ebon Legion. Uh, that cannot effectively block our C dash or octopus. So we're gonna brazen bar or bounce the gutter bones. I think. Keeping brazen borrower in hand is certainly better against Rankle, and they did they did choose to get rid of the borrower. But if we untap and Teferi, obviously then we're uh then we're tapped at anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna cast this. I think Operation make o Octopus hit. What? Why was there a stop in their second main? That's really annoying. Obviously, I just assumed it was their end step. Why would it, why would it, why would it stop in their second main? It doesn't usually stop there. We just have, we have a stop set. Well, that's really annoying. Um, doesn't make any sense at all, but sure. It still can't block, obviously, but like just a free mana we get to spend. It's really stupid. All right, Polywog, sure. All right. Um, I mean, playing to fairy and bouncing what you know, like nothing really seems great to bounce. Um, probably just gonna like, I mean, you can just play borrower, I guess. Borrow box rankle also. Playing polywog doesn't seem super effective at the moment. Yeah. It's really annoying that the gutter bones is in play. Because now I can block this turn too. We could borrow her and block the freebooter. Um, that's probably where we're at, I guess. Freebooter is kind of, is is checking our fairy, so we can't play the fairy and have it lives pretty well. Another knight. All right. And yeah, now our octopus can't get in. That's a pretty good one. All right, so we're setting up for next turn. Gonna play Polywog. No good attacks here into the uh, the knight. They can castle if they want to, but they're not going to. Interesting attack. Um, we could just block with the Polywog here and force them to use their mana. I actually kind of like that a lot. Polywog isn't that important. We're gonna Shore Shark next turn, so they waste their mana. We get the Shore Shark, bounce their thing, and really get in. I like this a lot, actually. Now they can't pump this knight. And now we untap. Draw Animal Sanctuary. I've got time. Hmm. Maybe that was wrong. I don't know. Because I kind of want to play the Fire of turn anyway now. Like playing the Shore Shark on the Dasher is fine, but not ideal. And we could have looted away the sanctuary too. Maybe that was wrong. Definitely might have been wrong. Because we this is gonna pump the size on this anyway. It doesn't even matter that we bounce the gutter bones realistically.
Um, I guess we bounce the gutter bones because the rather than light block. Every card we draw is very, very good. Right. There we go. Now it's much harder than to kill the fairy too, and defending against the short shark. Gutter ball, sure. Holly Wong. So it is very hard for us to attack now because they have double knight. Um, I don't think it's worth playing the second Teferi. We can just kind of chill for a minute and use Animal Sanctuary, pump the savior. Can't pump frogs, right? No. Next turn we can Teferi, Teferi, bounce, bounce. Kill spell. That's really, really bad. They spike two kill spells. No. That's interesting. Uh, okay. And we draw a casket. Sure. So, I mean, now I get to do everything. I mean, I guess. Maybe their plan is to kill it. Not, why, why, why wouldn't this kill it on their turn? It doesn't make any sense. They had two kill spells. Oh, they can't do it response, right? So, like, getting rid of the fairy here is actually possibly bad for us. If I, if I minus the fairy to bounce a knight, they might just be able to doomblade my shore shark. But I guess they can just do that anyway, right? Like, so we could be in trouble here. Because um, they couldn't do it in response to the dog activation because the fairy was in play but if if we just say go and they just untap and doomblade it i mean i have no, no recourse so i guess we're just bouncing here and hoping to draw a good spell I'll protect you. that's a, that's that's a good spell okay uh -huh. asking you shall receive i suppose I think we're gonna casket the knight. Let's we'll bounce the gutter bones. No, I am not making this up as I go. Ends, but sure. All right, this feels pretty good. Fight as one. Let's go. Safari is also good in this deck because forcing them to play on their turn makes our mutations a lot safer too, which is nice. So. Right, replay, replay the knight. Replay gutter bones. I guess we're not there yet, right? Oh, that's that's pretty good. I mean, the spawn just gonna kill them in three turns, so that's cool. Draw a spell. That is a spell. That is a spell. All right, Here we just go. tap out for this thing. We are gonna drawing lands, so play an eight eight. There you go. You go to two. We go to 17. Timer it chosen. That's pretty good, actually. We got only. Yeah, there's a good amount of creatures in graveyards. This can gain them like four or five life. Untap. Sea Dasher Octopus. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um. We can like pump it. the Serpent with a Sanctuary. Actually, we're going to... um, You loot on cast. So we're going to hold full control. We're going to tap two. 
And we're going to mutate, loot, and then probably pump the Serpent response before the Octopus resolves. I guess if I... Hold on. I guess if I put it on the on the short straw, we just bounce something and probably just kill them. Yeah, that's actually probably better. We just bounce the Swan of Mayhem. They can pump this Knight a bunch of times, though. They pump it twice. It would be a 7-8. Yeah, actually, hold on. I mean, they're probably just dead, because the, the trample is going to get them, too. I'll just do this. Let's put this here. I only lost one blue anyway, so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So we're going to bounce the spawn of Mayhem, and the Fairy bounces the Knight, and they're super dead, so... Don't worry, I got you. Alrighty. Go get him, Stone Quail Serpent. So we'll not draw any cards. There's no trample on our uh our pouncing shore shark, but all right. I mean, this is probably lethal. They can gain, they can gain what six life, but they're taking a whole bunch of damage here. So, well, let's see what happens. Let the chips fall where they may. You know, I think we're in a really good spot regardless. It seems difficult for our farm to come back from this. Amusingly enough, our Pouncing Shore Shock with nine things on it is also a selfless savior. So they try and kill my Stone Coil Serpent. I can protect it and then kill them with it. It's only a matter of time. And... Exact lethal. Four and one with the secret life of pets. Only losing to Rakdos Sacrifice, which just beats me no matter what Reacher deck I'm playing. You know, so... um. Looking for a fun deck to play in Standard. I know Standard's been a little stale lately, and uh, people were complaining about Team Reclamation and clamoring for bans and stuff, but you can do fun stuff, all right? You can do fun stuff. There's still fun things to do. And um, Mutate Mechanic, kind of uh, kind of un, uh, unexplored a little bit, you know, given the uh, prevalence of Reclamation and things like that in the format. So dust off those Ikoria Draft Commons, give them a spin, Selfless Savior, Polywog Symbiote, Sea Dasher Octopus, Volca Pete, The Secret Life of Pets, coming to a, a pet store near you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. I am Jim Davis for CoolStuffInc.com. As I said earlier, check out the uh, companion article to this video on CoolStuffInc.com. Free content every weekday, no paywall. I do a video every Monday. I do a written article every Friday. Go to CoolStuffInc.com. Check it out. Also, use promo code Jim5 for 5% off your order and a free Jim Davis Goblin token. Promo code Jim5, 5% 5 off your order, and a free Jim Davis Goblin token. I'll see you fine folks on Friday for my article, and then right back here on Monday next week for my next video. I'm Jim Davis. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.